and definitely just get a win and a winning season here at NAU. And definitely, you know, the ultimate goal is a big sky championship. And so whatever I could do to help my team do that, including, you know, getting the double doubles that I have been or or just facilitating the ball like um, I can as well. And, and the team just realizing uh, who has a hot hand. Uh, Renee Coggins, our uh, point guard, has recently been doing incredible on the on the offensive end and just facilitating the ball with whoever has a hot hand. Nice. You got a uh, you got a road trip with the one coming up. You'll be in Idaho and then Eastern Washington this week. Uh, talk about those two teams and what you need to do to be successful on this road trip. Um, I think um, actually we play them at home. Oh, okay, uh, gotcha. I'm sorry. Uh, but no, you're fine. Uh, I think we uh, uh, definitely just focus on uh, those are two great teams who have already proven this season that that they're out to win too. And I think just. Sticking together and playing together is our strongest point in this season. And I think if we continue to do that and play all four quarters, like I said, then we're going to come out with wins. And I think we just need to focus on that. For a freshman, you sound an awful lot like a coach. You got the coach speaking yeah. really well. Good job. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. Good luck this weekend. We look forward to catching a video. Thank you. Time. Thanks for having me. You thanks. got it. That's great stuff. Alyssa Raider, Northern Arizona Center here on this weekend, Big Sky Basketball. Thanks for a break. And talk about the men's side of the Big Sky basketball as Eastern Washington's Austin McBroom will join us. Stay with us. You're listening to another edition of This Week in Big Sky Hoops. A new era has come to Big Sky Conference basketball. 24 teams will invade the Reno Event Center on March 7th. Make plans to join us in Reno, where you'll be the witness to all the basketball madness you can handle. Tickets are on sale now. Visit www.roadtoreno.com to get all the details on how you can join your team on the road to Reno. We play to win, but it's bigger than winning. It's about authenticity, being true to yourself, genuine dreams and a country big enough to fit them. Values and hard work, giving your best and giving back. Working together, building a tradition bigger than any one of us and showing the world every day who we are and how we play. We're Big Sky. We are the heart of the American West. Second number two here on this weekend in Big Sky Basketball. Let's take a look at last week's Big Sky scores before we reveal this week's Player of the Week. On Thursday, it was Idaho State getting a win over UNC, 83-78. Montana over Portland State, 79-66. Weaver State picks up a victory over North Dakota, 74-62. And Montana State over Sac State, 71-64. Then on Saturday, it was Eastern Washington with a win over Idaho, 74-60. Portland State gets a road win over Montana State, 77-70. While Northern Arizona gets a win over Southern Utah, 73 to 63. Also, the Grizz defeated Sac State, 77 to 58. North Dakota with a win over Idaho State, 84 to 76. And Weaver State gets a win over Northern Colorado. Final score on that one, 85 to 68. This week's Player of the Week's a combination of two great performances: Weaver State's Joe Ballboy and Montana's Walter Wright, both named Big Sky Players of the Week. Wright, a junior guard uh, from Connecticut, led Montana to wins over Portland State and Sac State. In a 79-66 win uh, on two Thursday, Wright scored 22 points on 8 of 13 shooting, including 3 of 4 from the end three-point line. Joe Ballboy continues to play really well. Two double-doubles to stay atop the national rankings with 15. Also moving to third place in the Big Sky All Conference rebound rankings with 1,117, uh, e- eclipsing former Montana Great University of Utah head coach Larry Kraskoviak. Then on Thursday, in a 74-62 over North Dakota, win over North Dakota, the Weaver State senior had 20 points, pulled down 23 rebounds for his second 2020 double-double of the season. His 23 rebounds is a Big Sky season high. A reminder to all you Big Sky fans, purchase tickets to your 2016 Big Sky Basketball Championships at RoadToReno.com or by visiting their school box office. Information on discounted hotel accommodations, entertainment options, and other activities in Reno can also be found at your website, RoadToReno.com. All right, let's go up to the phones. Welcome in Eastern Washington guard Austin McBroom. Austin, how you doing, man? 
I'm doing good, man. How are you doing? I'm doing well. This is your first year at Eastern after transferring from St. Louis. How's your first year been there? TV, how's that treating you? Uh, no, I'm just going to have to, uh, it's pretty good, man. I'm happy to have a guy used to the weather. <laughs> um, <laughs> other than that, um, as far as basketball goes and school life, uh, everything's been pretty good. Uh, when you were playing at St. Louis, the Billikens made it to the uh, round of 32. Uh, talk a little bit about that experience and if you can transfer maybe some of that experience to your team in Eastern Washington to hopefully make a tournament run. Well, that was a great experience. Um, just being there. Um, I wish it could have gone further, obviously. Mm-hmm. But um, this team, there's been a couple of players obviously on this team that have been there as well. So they, so they know what it takes to get back. And they also know what it feels like to just be there. So, um, I just want to speak to you guys every day. I'm not that feeling, and uh, hopefully we can get back here again this year. What was the uh, decision like in uh, deciding to leave and why choose uh, Eastern Washington? Um, the decision was actually fairly easy. Um, Coach Hayford uh, made that decision for me um, real easy. Uh, just by him just being there, he came out to L.A. To, to visit me and visit my family. And uh, I actually got to, you know, actually spend a lot of quality time with him. And uh, we had great conversations. He just, you know, just preached a lot um, about family and just, you know, being there for one another. And, you know, a lot of coaches will sit there and tell you one thing and, and not mean it, but he, he definitely meant it and he took action in every, everything he said. And um, just a great fit for me. Uh, he told me I was going to be playing a lot of minutes, and that's, that's obviously what I'm doing. And he just gives me a lot of confidence um, and everything's been working out. Well, you're seventh in the nation in three pointers made, and in the top ten nationally in three pointers made with your teammate Felix Van Hoff. Uh, it seems to be uh, safe to say that uh, Coach Aper is giving you guys a green light to uh, hoist that thing up whenever you see a good look. Oh well, but you say take balls to shoot and take balls to make it. <laughs> that's, uh, that's one of his favorite lines. But yeah, man, um, I have great shooters around me um, and very big to finish. So as long as I get in the paint and kick out. Um, I think it, it opens up a lot of a lot of shots for me as well. Um, so, so we've got to keep shooting confidence and, and uh, we'll keep, we'll keep making them. Well, it also seems like, too, that you guys are feeding off each other from what you said, that, you know, that even though everybody's getting a lot of shots, it doesn't seem like everybody's out to get better. It's all about a team effort to make sure that everybody's getting good looks. Exactly. And I think it's a big club having thank you down low because a lot of teams have been, you know, doubling him. Yeah. Even, Tripling him some games, so he does a great job of you know finding guys and picking up. You guys picked up a win over Idaho on Saturday and had a big performance with 26 points, seven assists. Tell us about that win over the Vandals because it seemed like you guys really had a rolling in that one. Well, I think it was a, a big win for us. Um, just being able to you know be back home, we've been on the road a lot um, from previous games, but just being back at home with a great crowd um, where we came out and played played real tough. We actually. So that's probably our best defense and rebound again. Those are two two main things we definitely need to work on and we took a whole week of practice to work on those and we you know, improving and stuff in the right direction. But I think it was a great win and a great confidence booster for us. Last season Eastern now won the Big Sky Tournament Championship. Uh, so you can put your coaching hat on a little bit. What does team need to do to see if they can be back to back tournament champs and a bunch of tickets to an NCAA tournament again? Um we went for rebounding, like I said before. Yeah. Um those are the two things we need to step up on. Um, but other than that, I think our, I think our offense will take care of itself. But if we put together a defense for rebounding and, and play tough every game, like I guess our last game, I think we can, we can definitely get there. Austin, we appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. You got it. That's Austin McBroom of Eastern Washington joining us here on this weekend. Big Sky Basketball. We're going to take a final break. Come back. We'll be joined by College Insiders Kevin E. Martin. We'll also reveal this week's men's and women's schedules. That and a whole lot more coming up next when we return for our final segment here on This Week in Big Sky Basketball. We play to win, but it's bigger than winning. It's about authenticity, being true to yourself, genuine dreams and a country big enough to fit them, values and hard work, giving your best and giving back. Working together, building a tradition bigger than any one of us, and showing the world every day who we are and how we play. We're Big Sky. We are the heart of the American West. A new era has come to Big Sky Conference basketball. 
24 teams will invade the Reno Event Center on March 7th. Make plans to join us in Reno, where you'll be the witness to all the basketball madness you can handle. Tickets are on sale now. Visit www.roadtoreno.com to get all the details on how you can join your team on the Road to Reno. Welcome back, final segment of the show. You're listening to another edition of this weekend Big Sky Basketball. I'm Scott Gerard. Uh, coming up here in just a moment, we're in chat with Kevin e. Martin. But first, let's reveal our schedules for the upcoming week, starting with the men. Let's we'll highlight a few matchups. Montana attempts to stay undefeated against Northern Colorado and North Dakota this week, while Weaver State attempts to do the same. They'll be up against Portland State and Sacramento State. A tough road trip for both the Grizz and the Wildcats. Montana State on the road with North Dakota and Northern Colorado, while Southern Utah and NAU will do uh, the, the Eastern uh, Washington Idaho road trip. On the women's side, Montana State is at home this weekend, hosting North Dakota and, and uh, Northern Colorado. While Eastern Washington is on the road at Northern Arizona and Southern Utah. Idaho will also be on the same road trip. Weaver State hosts Portland State and Sacramento State, while Idaho State does the same. Remember, you can find game tags and streaming information on all the Big Sky Conference weekly viewing guide published every Thursday morning at BigSkyConference.com. And remember, every conference game is streamed live and for free on WatchBigSky.com. It's available in full HD on cell phones, tablets, and desktops. Again, live, free, and in HD at WatchBigSky.com. All right, let's go up to the phones. Welcome in College Insiders, Kevin e. Martin, who joins or who covers mid-major basketball for the website. Kevin, e., how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm battling a little bit of a cold, so bear with me. The voice isn't quite as uh, normal, so uh, hang in there with me, all right? No problem. All right, so let's start with some national trends. Your former player, uh, what do you think about the, uh, four qu- or the four quarters and how that's changing women's college basketball? I think it's great. Um, to be honest, I think it really, really enhances the flow of the game, obviously, for obvious reasons. There's less timeouts, specifically media timeouts. Um, you know, it's down to just six now instead of eight. Um, and also, it affects the fouls. Um, you know, now on every 15 foul, the, the team gets two shots, and then it resets to zero after every quarter unless it goes into overtime. Um, so it puts a huge emphasis on free throw shooting. Um, and just as a player, um, as a former player, and I remember looking up at the scoreboard during the game, and, you know, at the beginning of the half when you look up and you see, you know, 11, 12 minutes left in the game, players aren't seeing that anymore. You know, so there's more urgency. You're never going to see the clock over 10 minutes. So I feel like if you're going to look up at the clock and you see, you know, you have four minutes to go, there's going to be more of an urgency, faster pace of the game. You know, it adds excitement. Um, there's more chances of buzzer beaters. It's, um, so, yeah, it enhances the flow. There's more excitement. And then transition-wise, um, I mean, every other level of the game was in this format, full, full quarter format, high school, um, even the professional, international. So um, transition-wise for high school seniors transitioning to college or even college seniors transitioning to the next level, um, they're already, you know, they're going to be used to that full quarter format instead of the 220 that has this that was previous. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm on the bandwagon on the immense side of doing the same change here very soon. I think that's a great point made by you on uh, all fronts. Let's, uh, let's talk about some other storylines. What are some other things that are jumping out to you so far in the first half of the uh, season nationally? Not just the Big Sky Conference, but what other teams are starting to catch your eye? Um, well, you got to definitely. Um, one of the biggest stories that I was in shock, with, which actually happened um, just this past Saturday, um, Central Michigan's uh, sophomore, uh, Tamara Moore, uh, her line, this isn't the story, but she finished with 35 points and 20 rebounds, but the story was she became the second player in NCAA history to shoot 100% from the field, which is unbelievable. Um, she's only a sophomore, so that was pretty cool to see. Um, and then you got to uh, shout out, obviously, the bigger school, Sylvia Hatchell, hitting her 700th win um, this past week. Um, she now only trails to, I think, 973 total wins and only the most winningest um, active coach, only trailing the great Pat Summit right now. Um, which is awesome. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's been an exciting year. The University of Florida um, has hit the national rankings for the first time since 2009. They uh, ranked 20th. So Amanda Butler 
um, in her ninth year down there in Florida, has got the Gators rolling. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's an exciting year. Some really, really good basketball being played. And, um, yeah, the what I've seen so far. It's, it's been a fascinating year, no doubt, and one of the more interesting continuing stories here in the Big Sky Conference is Sacramento State's style of play. They scored 132 points in a game last week. As a former player, what do you think of that running gun, full-court press, three-point shooting style? I love it. <laughs> and as a fan, you have to love it. Yeah. I mean, who does not like going to a game and um, watching a team put up 100 points? I mean, they scored over 100 points twice this year and over 94 times. Um, it's unbelievable. Um, but then you have to see, then you have to take the side of the defensive gurus that are scratching their heads um, because they, they're um, second in the nation in scoring, um, trailing only UConn. Uh, they average about a little over 87 a game. But they're giving up 87.2. So they're averaging 87.3 and they're giving up 87.2. So uh, the margin there is point one. So, I mean, but they're getting it done, and you know, uh, it's, it's very exciting. It's fun. You definitely have to, it's, it's a track meet more than a basketball game at some points. I feel like watching it. Um, but yeah, you gotta love it. it. It's exciting. It's a different type of style. Um, like you said, the running gun is fun. And as a player, I, that that's how I play. I love to get up and down the court and push the ball in transition. And yeah, so it's as a fan, you love it. Um, and they seem, I mean, they seem to be, you know, excelling at that type of play because it's not new. They've been playing that way um, for a while. So it's pretty exciting to see. And uh, as a defensive guru, I can see them, you know, <laughs> getting a little antsy up there. You know, it's funny. We talked to the coach before on the show, and, and the message is, you know, when we go out and recruit, that you know everybody sees this style from recruits, and they say, "Oh, we want to play that style of basketball." Then we get them here on campus, and, and we put them through the work you have to go through in conditioning to get to the point where you can play that. And uh, it's it's not easy. And as a former player that kind of played that style, just talk a little bit about the work that has to go in to be able to be successful playing at that kind of tempo. Oh, it's insane! The conditioning, um, the pre-season. I mean, for the preseason, we had to pass a conditioning test. So there wasn't even a preseason, really. Like, you had to have a preseason for your preseason to make sure that you were in shape um, to pass this test so that you could make it to the season. So, um, yeah, you better be ready to run. Um, and like I said, uh, it's more of a track meet at times. I mean, you're constantly going, and um, it's expected, you know, the, the entire game. So I can only imagine. Um, I get tired. I, I've seen – I've uh, – seen some footage of Sacramento State's play, and I get tired of watching. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, uh, let's look at the standings a little bit. Eastern Washington and Montana State lead the conference. From the standpoint of a mid-major play, what do these teams need to do to make sure that they uh, remain successful throughout the uh, remainder of the season and stay top those standings? Um, well, both teams are solid through and through. I mean, they, um, they have some really solid players. It's not just one player, if you notice. Um, they have, like, five players that can play. So, at this point, it's kind of if they can stay healthy through conference play. And if they can manage to do that, which um, it sounds a little funny to say that, but, I mean, it comes down to just eating right and making sure that you're in the training room, even if you don't have an injury, you know, just to make sure your body can handle. Because it's a long season, especially conference play. And um, the... the the toll it has on your body. So if these teams can stay healthy, um, I, I don't see. I mean, they're both have, are looking very solid. Uh, Montana State on a five-game win streak and Eastern Washington on a three-game. Um, and they're both undefeated in the conference, as you said. And it's, I mean, if they can stay healthy, and um, I think that both of them can carry this trend through the rest of the conference play. Well, Kevin, we appreciate it. Great insight, great analysis. We look forward to catching up with you again soon. Oh, definitely. Thanks for having me. You got it. Kevin e. Martin, collegeinsider.com, joining us here on This Week in Big Sky Basketball. That will do us. Big, uh, special thanks to Kevin e, as well as Alyssa Raider and Austin McBroom. Also, big thanks to Austin Horton and the executive producers of This Week in Big Sky Basketball, John Oglesby and Jason Ashcraft. I'm Scott Gerard. Enjoy another week of college basketball. We'll be back with you next week for another edition of This Week in Big Sky Basketball.